Welcome back to part two of repairing the Easy 9 Penny Slot Arcade Machine. Pennies only. Beep, 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 beep. Now, for those of you who watched last time, when I got this, it was completely warped, bent. I really, it was hopeless. Um, basically, it hadn't got a back on it, so over years stored in a loft, the two sides, which are made of hardwood of some sort, had warped, sorry, bowed outwards. After much cogitation, rumination, and other such things, cups of coffee, I took the whole thing to pieces, everything, everything apart. Got it all back together again, and planed bits of wood. This is the actual game itself, the idea being you put a coin in the slot, a ball drops down here, you then, a bit like a pinball machine, you pull back a lever and flip it, and the ball goes round and round and round and round, and if you get it just right, it goes in one of these slots and you get your money back and another go. If you're unlucky, it goes back down to the bottom, goes in this hill here, and you have to pay to have another go. And I assume it's a lovely mechanism because it doesn't rely on electricity or anything else. The um, operator, the penny inserter, provides all the motive power, which is very clever. And I assume, I'll show you how it works in a second, but I assume that this is a fairly standard sort of arrangement. You can, once you've got the idea with something that the ball can fall in here, I remember playing lots of these on holiday, and you get every variety under the sun. It might be horse racing, it could be, I don't know what else. But I think they probably, um, because these were mass produced, probably used the same sort of mechanism for all of them, which is terribly, terribly clever. Let me show you. You can see, get the impression of how it works. Ball comes down here. It doesn't have to come out of the back. It falls down the hole and then runs down here and gets stuck on this ancient piece of plastic which is all warped and bent. So my first job is to take some photographs of this in the hope that I can remember how to put it back together again and replace this piece with a piece of um, two millimetre thick acrylic. I think that'll be fine. This is less, it's about one and a half mil, but I think that'll be the best thing to do. It's got all sorts of slots and things in it, so that'll be a nice little challenge. I'm trying to work out what this little clicky thing was for. And it's ever so clever because it's to stop you stealing money and getting free goes. Because what you could do if it wasn't for that, if I hold that out of the way, I don't want to damage it, but hold that out of the way, and you'd won, you could pull this back. Oh, I can't see a thing here. And pull this back, it releases winnings, but it hasn't gone far enough. Then you can click it, you can slide it back, get another coin, slide it back, get more winnings, and you could just empty the machine by going back as a force. But this is the clever bit. Once you've got this, if you stop, you can't do anything. Once it's reached there, it will only go back, you can't go back the other way. It's an anti-theft device. Isn't that clever? And then, of course, because the ball isn't here, you can't have another go unless the ball's gone here. If you lose, the ball comes down here and just goes back, putting some weight on here, ready for another coin to go in. Isn't that lovely? And then all the coins that are paid in get stacked up in here. They're the old 1P pieces, which are that sort of size. So they fall down there and land in here, so you have a little reservoir of winning coins, so to speak. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I see how it works. Oh, how clever. So simple. I've been trying to work out how the coins can get down that back thing into the tray underneath, the coin store tray. And once this is full and you've got this right full of coins, and any other coins will just slide across the top down there. Oh, isn't that clever? I love ingenuity, and this is just so fantastic. There's so many clever features and ideas. Particularly love that little bit. I mean, that's so simple. It's just that it stops you cheating. Isn't that lovely? Until you get back there, it's, it's a lovely mechanism as well. Right, what I'm going to do now is take all these pieces off so I can get this plastic off. I'm most, I've got most of the bits off. I thought I'd live dangerously by just resting the screws and all the little holes that with a fit of peak if I sweep something over or move something they'll all go all over the carpet with visibility in the mud. Now, the thing is I don't know what this bit does. I can see what it does. It's got a flap. 
inside but it's stiff and I can't work out what that is because if the, if you've won and the ball's coming down here it just carries on down there if you've lost the ball never comes this way the only thing I can think is that it somehow randomly sometimes makes you lose if you've won but it really doesn't make any sense there's so many lovely parts, so beautifully made. I mean, look at that with four springs just to hold it with a little bit of tension, or compression rather, to empty the coins out. It's lovely. Brass. Luckily, I assume for repair maintenance purposes, you can lift all these bits through because there are slots. Here's this lovely bit that supports each of the steel, the steel ball and with, uses the weight of it to, to release this funny release thing. I suppose proper name would be an escapement because it works in the same way as a clock escapement. But I haven't I didn't want to unscrew that because I my brain is a muscle and trying to get this lined up with whatever that is would be impossible or very difficult. So I'll leave that together. Now we can see the this bit. So what I'm gonna do for better or for worse I think I'm gonna try and scan it. Some may say scanning something transparent is a recipe for disaster. But if I can scan it 100%, drop it into CAD software, it will make it much easier to line up rather than having to measure everything. I'll give it a go. It's got a strange red hue to it. Sure enough. Voila! It scanned in really nicely. Let me just get rid of Moire. Go away, Moire. Scanned in really nicely, and I've checked the measurements, horizontal and vertical, just to make sure that we are in the right ballpark. Now I'm going to just basically trace around all these shapes. It may go completely wrong because this was all distorted and warped. Well, actually not that bad, you know, a little bit of warpage. Um, so we'll do that and see how we get on. I might make them all a bit, about half a millimetre bigger, just to allow for a bit of give and take. Theoretically, that's what we need to cut out of 2mm acrylic. Now the next really challenging job is actually to get to the laser cutter. It's ludicrous I tell you. I think I must invest, might invest in a shed or something just to put all this stuff in. Boxes of boxes. There's the laser cutter down there with the other barometric prognosticator through and the fan on it. Right, let's try and clear a space. And there we have it, 15 millimetres a second at 40%. Let's get that cut. <whistles> I've seen worse. This actually lines up quite nicely, sort of. Yeah, it does. I've found, figured out what this is for, this control. It's so that the proprietor, if they're feeling particularly mean and they don't want you to have another chance at winning another coin, if you win, they do that. That's it. So that whether you win, lose, whatever, the ball always goes back to the starting point. If you do win, you will get a coin, your money back, but then obviously temptation is you put it back in to try and win again and don't. Isn't that funny? That's why it's sort of stiff, because it's meant to be, so you can leave it like that if you're generous. And then if you win, you have another go and the coin back. I'm very pleased with that. Got it all back together, lubricated. It all seems to be working beautifully. One thing I did notice was that this um, cotter pin hasn't got anything in it. I thought, oh, no, but I've just checked on the photos on the camera and found that it didn't have. I'm not quite sure what purpose it fulfills, because that doesn't go anywhere near it. Perhaps it's just some standard part that they add to this because this is a standard part from a whole range of other machines that they make. I'm not sure. It's funny but I bet that's what it is actually because there's a slot there. Here's the inside of the door. Here's that lovely cast um, slot, a uh, coin slot entry. So it rolls down um, past all these holes. Not quite sure what they're for. If it's too small it can fall out this side. If it's too big It'll get stuck and not go through, I assume, therefore, if it jams up, the proprietor opens it up and just pushes a finger in to get rid of these jammed coins. And there's the classic magnet, the horseshoe magnet. Look at that. Proper magnet. So that any um, washers that are magnetic that get this far get stuck. And again, 
can't be released. In fact, I assume that's what all these holes are for. They all function some sort of catching purpose for different sizes, and they're there so you can pop your finger in and poke them through if they get jammed up. Moving down, here's the bottom. Here's the lovely striking mechanism. On the other side, there's the big lever that you pull back, and that pulls the hammer back and fires the ball around. Lovely, nice big spring and a chain for adjustment. I put a little mark here because originally it was that tension. How lovely though, what a nice simple and effective way of adjusting the tension on here. I assume to make it even more difficult but apparently simple to win. That better. It all fits, shuts beautifully, locks, doesn't wobble around. Very pleased with that. Right, next thing Clean the ball, which I haven't yet done, put it in there, and then, this is a lovely modular, easy to maintain nature of these machines, there's the sheet of glass. When you open the door, there's a little slot along the top, so you can just drop the glass in. Really, really nice design, it's lovely. And there we have it, well here we have it, all back together with the glass sheet put in. So the first thing to do is... I zoomed out, yeah. Well, first thing to do is to put a penny in the slot. Let's just have a look at these, they're amazing. I've never been really interested in collecting coins, but I was looking at them and looking at the dates on them. The most recent, before um, the UK was decimalised, is this one with the Queen's head, and it's 1967. One of the earliest ones, oh, what's this one then? That's very old, is it? Depends how much, oh no, that's 1967. It depends on how they've been treated, it's amazing. Here's the oldest one I could find, 1919. So that coin is 102 years old. One penny piece. With George, King George on it. Amazing. Anywho, let's put some of these in the machine. Coin at number one. No, it doesn't work. Okay, coin number two. No ball. Okay, let's open it up and see why. I think I can see what is going wrong. When the coin lifts, falls on that, it lifts that up, which should then start it releasing, it drops back down and the other side should continue allowing the ball bearing to drop down but oh would you adam and eve it there's a screw there I can't see what i'm talking about oh, let's wind it that's amazing i just bent this up ever such a slight little bit now when it goes a coin goes past it allows that to rotate and as you saw just down here the ball bearing top ha the ball hardened steel ball to run into the play area. Interesting. The ball hasn't quite made itself out. I think I might have to take this apart and just perhaps shave a little bit of wood off underneath that. But that's now released that, so... No. Right, I've shaved a little bit off there, put it back together. Just use my winnings to have another go. So, pop that in there. Ah, that's it. Look, it's appeared. Now I can fire it and lose. So I don't get my money back and this is locked. What's happened around the back? My coin has fallen into the receptacle which isn't overflowing yet so it's still got plenty of prize money and the ball has dropped straight back down around the side ready down here to receive another coin. Let's do that. Another coin, and the ball has appeared. For the ball, this could be a long process. That's why I was annoyed when I did win, and I hadn't got the recording going. But this is great because it means that I can check everything is working. Ah, I've won. Now what that means is I should be able to turn this handle and receive my prize money. Hmm. I don't know the go. The ball's appeared, but no prize money. That's interesting. It was releasing a coin, but 
they were getting stuck on the lip between this cast bowl and this. So I need to lift that up a little bit to ensure the corns actually make it into the trough. And I've now adapted this, so if I poke a coin in here, let's go and have a look. Sure enough, it comes out there. So all these lovely little, little problems that we're solving one at a time, most enjoyable. How fabulous to have been given the opportunity to provide a 1950s penny arcade machine with the tender loving care it deserved. The cabinet and mechanism have been restored and it now works perfectly. Please click like and subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Next time, developing the reciprocating clock that has been in development over the last five years.